Is this day? Yeah. Seekers, pal. Oldest of the old. Welcome back, Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to another episode of Fixing Transformers. And in today's, we're going to take a look at the other five Seekers that were shown in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Now, the term Seeker in Transformers lore is usually referred to Starscream and a Squadron. But like most things in the Bayverse, it gets flipped upon its head. You see, the Seekers in Revenge of the Fallen refer to a group of early Cybertronians who worked under the Dynasty of the Primes, seeking out planets that had no life on them so they could build Star Harvesters upon them. Star Harvesters are constructed to harvest Energon by destroying suns, and this Energon will be used to recharge the Allspark when it was low. The Prime set out with one rule, never destroy a planet with life, until one of them tried to defy this rule, and his name forevermore was the Fallen. You see, around 17,000 BC, the Seven Primes reached our solar system in their quest to build a Star Harvester, but they discovered that the Chosen System contained a life-bearing planet, and the Six Primes objected to using the Star Harvester on the system's sun. The seventh, however, intended on using the Harvester anyway. This Prime by the name of Megatronus quickly turned on his brothers and their creed, raging war against them, with those who agreed with his ideals on his side. After attacking his fellow Cybertronians and slaughtering a large amount of early humans, he was thereafter known as the Fallen. The remaining Primes mounted an attack on their new nemesis and hit the Matrix of Leadership. Without it, the Fallen could not activate the Star Harvester. In a tomb composed of their very own bodies, on the planet he sought to destroy, the Six Primes used the last of their energy from the battle to completely seal it. Sometime after the battle finished, the Fallen forged a Decepticon faction and dispatched many Seekers to locate the Matrix. Jetfire was one such Seeker dispatched by the Fallen. However, Jetfire and the other Seekers were unable to find the tomb that the Primes had forged. The only clue they could find was a riddle. When Dawn elides the dagger's tip, three kings were revealed the doorway. Eventually, the Fallen abandoned the Seekers, and they were forced to go into Stasis Lock out of a lack of Energon. This now leads us up to the events of Revenge of the Fallen. Before Sector 7 was shut down, Seymour Simmons copied as much research as he could, including the files related to Project Black Knife, a project commissioned after Sector 7 became increasingly aware of Cybertronian activity on Earth. The project discovered alien markings inscribed on ruins all across the planet, along with detecting radioactive signatures all across the country, raising the possibility that there may be aliens lying inert on the planet. For unknown reasons, however, this evidence was deemed inconclusive, and the project went nowhere. After Wheelie was brought in to help figure out what the cyberglyphics meant, he noticed that they were the language of the Primes, and pointed out that the various images of vehicles were Seekers, and could read the language. He would later pinpoint where they were located on the map on Simmons' wall, with the closest one being in Washington. Once at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum, Wheelie pointed out that the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird was a Seeker, and they used Allspark Fragment to give life to it. The Seeker turned out to be Jetfire, and throughout the film, he would help Sam and friends decipher the cyberglyphics, along with help finding the Matrix of Leadership, which would later be used to revive Optimus. He would tell them the story of the Dynasty of the Primes, and Megatronus' fall from grace, along with telling them that he changed sides to the Autobots after seeing the Fallen's true colors. During the Battle of Egypt, however, Jetfire was mortally wounded by Scorponok, and after Prime was revived, the Fallen snatched back the Matrix to power the Star Harvester. Jetfire took it upon himself to sacrifice himself, so Optimus could use his parts to be able to stop the Fallen. And his sacrifice wouldn't be in vain, since thanks to Jetfire, Optimus is able to destroy a Star Harvester, beat Megatron, and kill the Fallen. And after his parts were dumped in Egypt, Jetfire's story in the former Transformers Cinematic Universe will come to a close. Now, as I said earlier, Jetfire was not the only Seeker, since there's still five more in the United States, according to Wheelie, and possibly many more in other countries, but I'll get to that idea in a bit. But the other five Seekers that we saw were a Ford Model T, a B-24 Liberator, an F-104 Starfighter, a Dreyfus Streamline New York Central Hudson Locomotive, and lastly, a 1950 GMC 250 flatbed. Now, though these vehicles are confirmed to be Cybertronians, thanks to Wheelie's line, Where the frick did you find photos of these guys? Is this day? Yeah. Seekers, pal. Oldest of the old. They were never given any proper names. And since the Bay films are now discontinued, since Hasbro is now moving forward with the Bumblebee Cinematic Universe, we can only speculate on who these five Seekers could possibly be. But before I get into who they could possibly be, a quick word from day sponsor, Dash Lane. Now, as we all know, the internet can be a dangerous place. And when browsing, it should be essential to have an extra level of security. That's exactly what Dashlane provides. Dashlane can be your one-stop shop for your digital identity by managing all your passwords so you don't have to keep track of each one. Along with personal information and financials, making your digital life safer and more secure. 
Dashlane works across all devices, including all Apple products, PC, Android, Safari, and Chrome. Dashlane also has a secure autofill feature, which works for personal information and credit cards, saving you time when you shop online. It also has a built-in VPN to prevent prying eyes from tracking you, and it also helps you access content from anywhere, plus dark web monitoring to see if your information is being bought and sold illegally. To give it a try for free on your first device, go to dashlane.com slash transtheories and use my promo code transtheories to get 50% off if you want to upgrade to premium. Now that's a heck of a deal. And I want to say thank you, Dashlane, for sponsoring this video. So with that said, let's start off with Model T and see who he could possibly be. And well, out of the five unknown seekers in the United States, he's the only one who actually had concept art. And if it looks familiar, that's because it was repurposed for Ransack. Ransack was based upon the concept design of the Model T, created during production of Revenge of the Fallen, which existed in both a Ford Model T variant along with a biplane variant that got used for the toy. In a featurette on a Resident of Fallen's home video release, a scale chart is visible that includes the biplane design, amongst the film's Decepticons, having a height just at 12 feet. So with all that info in mind, if we would link the Model T to a character, our best bet would be Ransack. And possibly sometime after this photo of him was taken, he scanned the biplane as his new alternate form, which would make his quest in finding the Matrix more efficient. Now let's move on to the Hudson locomotive, and see who he could possibly be. And well the best answer would be Astro Train, for the fact that it's a train. And I already know I did a theory on Astro Train in the past, saying it was a subway train in Dark of the Moon, but this is an alternate theory, proposing that this seeker is actually Astro Train, since my other theory had a lot of holes in it, and it was more structured to be like a What If I Survive type video. So with that said, I think we can all strongly agree that this train seeker is most likely Astro Train. Now let's move on to the B-24 Liberator Seeker and see who he could possibly be. And well, only one candidate comes to mind, and that candidate would be Lugnut, since in all of his incarnations, he's been some type of bomber plane. And if you remember his hunt for the Decepticons incarnation, he was a mix between a B-24 Liberator and a B-17 Flying Fortress, most likely due to licensing issues. So with that said, I think it's safe to say that the B-24 Liberator Seeker is probably Lugnut. Now let's move on to the F-104 Starfighter Seeker and see who he could possibly be. And well, the Starfighter could really be anyone, but if I would have to take my best guess, it does have a vague resemblance to Ramjet. If you substitute the silver for white, honestly, your guess is as good as mine for this one. And sadly, we'll never get a concrete answer. Now lastly, let's move on to the 1950 GMC 250 flatbed seeker and see who he could possibly be. And like the Starfighter, can honestly be anyone. But a candidate that jumps to mind, to me at least, would be Cup. Since Cup feels that hard and old man role, similar to Jetfire. And an old beat-up 1950s GMC would work perfectly for his alternate form, because his G1 counterpart was also a flatbed truck. And of that, that was all the American Seekers. But I'm not done yet, since there's still four other Seekers from Europe that we haven't talked about yet. And though they're not confirmed to be Seekers, I have a good explanation on why they probably are. First of all, let's start off with Bulldog. Now, Bulldog is evident to be a Seeker, due to the fact that he has very similar traits to Jetfire. Both of them suffered from dementia, and both were falling apart. I'm on a mission. What planet am I on? You see, he thinks it's still the year 1918 or 1914, something like that. Robot dementia. I don't know, it's all pretty. Not my wretched self! Rusty my ass! What's the matter with it? Oh, my bits have fallen off. Now you could make the argument since Bulldog served in World War I that he's not a Seeker since B and Hot Rod both served in World War II, and they're clearly not Seekers. This is where I have to disagree. We know for a fact that Bulldog is much older than Bumblebee and Hot Rod, due to the fact that in the last night, he was falling apart, similar to Jetfire, but at a more excessive rate, and B and Hot Rod did not have this issue. The only reason why Bumblebee had a falling apart ability was due to Kate Yeager and not old age, and B was able to put himself back together quickly, unlike Bulldog who had to gather up all of his pieces. And you could say that Prime from Age of Extinction was falling apart as well, but he was severely damaged from his brawl with Cemetery Wind, and only his ear came off and nothing else. And take into account that 21 years after World War I, World War II commenced, and in Transformers years as nothing. So with that said, Bulldog is definitely much older than your average Cybertronian, and since he shares the same traits as Jetfire, such as dementia and falling apart, I think it's safe to say that he is a seeker. Now let's move on to Lieutenant also known as Spitfire. Now very little is known about this character, since he appears in this one shot, falls on the ground, and is never seen again. But this short scene of him does give us a clear diagnosis that he is of old age, due to the fact that we can see his legs twitching and his feet giving way before he falls face first into the ground, clearly showing he's an old Transformer, who's been around way longer than your average Cybertronian. Now though this doesn't mean he's a seeker, if we take into account Bulldogs and Jetfire's condition, Spitfire is definitely heading down the same path evident by the fact that he's very weak and doesn't have the strength to walk a few feet. This could possibly be a form of robot arthritis. With that said, it's likely for him to be a seeker. With Spitfire out of the way, this now leaves us two potential seekers left. 
one of which Edmund Burden has. That will be the unnamed fictional Northrop. I say fictional since a Northrop aircraft is a mix between a B-35 and a B-49 Northrop, creating a hybrid version that does not exist in the real world. Now the reason why we know the Northrop is a transformer is because in the shot we can see Kate in the cockpit, and the aircraft is clearly flying itself. Now though nothing is known about the Northrop besides this scene, if we take into account that the majority of Edmund's Transformers are elderly, we can make an educated guess that the Northrop is most likely elderly as well, and due to the lack of information on his character, is up in air to say if he or she's a Seeker. I like to make the Seeker connection due to Bulldog and Spitfire being potential Seekers, but this one I'll leave up to you guys to solve, along with what character he or she could possibly be. Now with the Northrop out of the way, it's time to move on to the last Europe Seeker. That would be the HMS Alliance submarine. Now we know the HMS is a transformer due to the various dialogue about her, along with how she moves on her own and jumps to dock. She knows the way to the staff. Oh, the old girl still got it. Jumped? What do you mean jumped? The old World War II sub jumped its moorings. They're in a transformer. With that evidence at hand, we know the sub is a transformer, as well as being a she, and only one candidate comes to mind on who this transformer could be. That would be Nautica from the IDW continuity, and the character of her was created way back in 2005, envisioned as a submarine transformer who had limited space travel capabilities, and those capabilities will come into play later. Now Nautica did have a concept art created for her during the last night's production, though it was never used. So we know that she is a transformer, but how do we know if she's a seeker or not? Well, we know she's a very old Transformer. Not just because she's a World War II sub, but the fact that Cogman calls her old. And Cogman has been around for 700 years, approximately the year 1322, serving the Burden family up until the last night. Yeah, I've been a butler to the aristocracy for 700 years. You are the worst I've ever worked for. If Cogman calls her old, we can infer that she's definitely older than your average Cybertronian. This line of reasoning can also be backed up, since Nautica was possibly the only Transformer who knew the location of the Guardian Knight ship concluding at one point she had ties with them, lining up with the Seekers being extremely old Transformers, and though none of the alleged Seekers I mentioned are confirmed, I think it's safe to classify them as such, due to all the information I put on the table. Now that said, there's one thing all Seekers possibly may have in common. That would be built-in space bridge technology. Jeff I was able to teleport himself, along with Sam and the gang to Egypt. Nautica's bio according to TF Wiki says that she has time travel capabilities, most likely something similar to the space bridge tech Jetfire has. Shut up! I told you I was opening a space bridge! It's the fastest way to travel what? to Egypt! Now though we may never know for certain if these other Seekers have this ability, I think it's safe to say that if Jetfire had it, then most likely all the other Seekers had it as well. Now another question that comes to mind is how was Edmund able to get all these Seekers? Well if you think about it, Edmund is an interesting case. Since he has many more Transformers in his possession, such as the watch that killed Hitler, Hot Rod, his cane, and Cogman, who's around 700 years old. The man even has a pillar, and much more Transformers related items. This all goes down to one thing, him being part of the Order of the Witwickens, a group dedicated to hiding the existence of Transformers on Earth, being established in 484 AD. Since the Order has been around for so long, it's highly likely they would come across Seekers, and eventually Edmund grouped up all the ones that he knew of back to his castle, hence why he has so many potential Seekers. Now the last thing I want to cover is the 7th American Seeker that was cut from the film. That would be the Convier F-102 Delta Dagger Seeker. Now this was a real prop shown for some time at the Transformers exhibit at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. Since if you remember, that was where the shots of Jetfire were filmed. Now this was one of many images on display, and oddly enough it was never shown on screen. You may think you see it in the shot next to the F-104 Starfighter, but oddly that's another photo of an F-104 Starfighter, and not the F-102 Delta Dagger. We can further back up the fact that the Seeker was cut, since Wheelie only showed six dots on the map instead of seven, concluding the Seeker to be cut. And just like that, that was who were the other Seekers. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you haven't already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. It means a lot and keeps my channel running, so a big fat thank you to you. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give a like, Rain, because it helped the channel a lot. With that said, hit that outro.